Hey guys and welcome back to this channel about the story. Thank you so much for watching the last video. And this video is going to be a review video about... Wait, 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 wait. The Ender's Game series. I loved, loved, loved this series and I want to tell you the seven reasons... Oh sorry, no, it's six. Six reasons why I love this series. Here it is. So it starts off with Ender's Game. Then speaker for the death, for the death, the for the death, genocide, and then children of the mind. Okay. Now it is. Well, it's not that long. I know there's way more books that go with this series, but these are like the four, I guess, main ones would be it. So we're gonna go through these four. Those are the ones I read. I, I don't know if I'm gonna read the other ones. There's a ton. There's like I believe 16 more. So whew, I don't. I don't know. But we'll see. Okay, so the first thing that I loved about these books was their characters. Oh my gosh, I love the characters. That's usually what makes or breaks a story to me. So, like, my favorite, obviously my favorite overall character was probably Ender. Because, okay, I love smart guys. So that, like, right away, I loved him for that. He was like, the genius, pretty much, out of it. Now, I know it could be kind of cliche to have that genius type in a book now, but I love that he was flawed so much because, okay, in the first book, he comes in as a six-year-old, so young, and they're recruiting him to pretty much find out if he could be the general to kill all of the buggers or an alien race that attacked the human race um, like 40 years prior. So, they um, they recruited this kid and he was perfect for the job, but you, in the first book, you just see all of his struggles with, um, well first with hurting people, because he kills someone off the bat, though he doesn't know that he killed him, until eventually they, like in the last book, they tell her like, oh yes, he did kill him, and he knew that he killed him, because he always says, um, he thinks, what is the way that I could stop this from ever happening to me again, or stop this evil happening? The easiest way to do that is to neutralize that, or kill the person. Now, when he was little, he probably didn't realize that that's what he did, but he did. He killed him, and he killed a few more people, and then eventually he killed a whole, um, a whole race, I guess? No, a whole alien species. So he committed genocide, pretty much. Though he did not know that. He did not know that he was doing that, but he, he was playing a game. And they kind of told him, like, this is a game you're playing against this other dude, and we're gonna see if you're good enough to do it. But at the end, they told him, they revealed to him, <sighs> one of the best reveals. He was like, you were doing it for real. This was war, and you won. And he was exalted, but eventually, oh, I don't know. Ender's just amazing. I love him he was and how complex he was he was just he was a mixture of his brother and sister which his brother was um, Peter who was I guess like the evil character in the book he was scary as heck I mean he tortured animals he um, he put down Ender a lot he made sure to scare him and I mean, it's just good stuff. And then the other side of him was Valentine, which is his sister, who is the sweetest, like altruistic person would be the word. And though they're both geniuses, like the three of them are geniuses. Um, he was like the perfect middle. Like she was too mild, and he was too. Wow, well, I'm getting all over the place. Like she was too mild, and he was way too. You know, um, what's the word? I can't think of the word. Oh, you just no. Aggressive. That's the word. That's it's way too aggressive. So, Ender's amazing. Now, eventually, the girl who becomes his wife, Naveenha, such an amazing character. Like, honestly, I feel so bad for her because, okay, she blames everything on herself. Like, all the deaths that happen, she blames it on herself. And I could see how she could come to that conclusion. But, it's obviously not healthy, not good for her, so it eventually like eats her up. But 
she ends up having like this redeeming factor of being so hardworking, so smart, um, caring for her children, wanting to take care of them, even though the way she takes care of them is by controlling them, which is not good. Um, her, oh my gosh, the things she goes through, she falls in love with them. Her parents die, and they become like saints in the Catholic Church, but then, you know, she doesn't feel that way, then she becomes a xenobiologist, which pretty much means, I think, I'm gonna say a lot of words wrong in this review, but whatever. Okay, I have to keep going. But anyway, Noveen has amazing. I love her character, love that. She seems so real, like a person that can be really, truly real. read the books. I really hope you read the books and you're reading this and you're watching this. Um, Ender somehow ends up having or creating two other beings. They look like his brother and sister when they were young, Peter and Val, or Valentine. And one is very aggressive and one is very altruistic and they are just like parts of his soul. And his soul breaks up into like three parts. So it's in him and then in Peter and Valentine. Wow, just the, just the amazing um, world building in this and the character building is amazing to me. Okay, that's the first thing I love. Very, very complex characters. That's not even all of them. All of them are so complex in a way. Um, okay, the second thing that I really love is the science behind it all. So they don't just say, oh, this happened because of this and that's it. No, they literally go in depth and had to explain certain things. Now, obviously, some of them are probably not true. Like, the, they think the most important one is like, I think it's the philotic theory? Philotic? I don't know how to say it. It's P-H-I-L-O-T-E-C. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but the theory of that everything's connected, that we all have... Um, see, I don't even... I had to read it twice to complete try to completely understand it and I probably can't explain it really but like that we're all connected that our souls are connected Gosh, dang. it was just insane and that's how they were able to like communicate through um, like through the Ansible which is the way to connect from planet to planet in like in a second and not having to connect like wait for a message to get there 30 years from now you know but that's amazing. Also, I mean, they explain it in such detail that you could think it's true, though it's not. Faster than light travel. That one was very interesting. It had to do with Jane, if you know who she is. She is like another alien species, or they call her like a god as well in the book. Um, she she's able to take people like outside of like time and place and then bring them back in another spot which is really cool so therefore you like travel there in a second instead of traveling through space for 30 years and missing a bunch of stuff okay that's the second thing that i really liked okay that cut off i guess i got a i don't know what that was it's like a call but okay number three the aliens oh my gosh this alien species that come out okay yeah i'm such a nerd the first one is obviously the buggers, which are creepy. I, honestly, if they like existed, like I get freaked out with a cockroach. I mean, uh, an, uh, an alien species that is massive, that's pretty big, um, that looks like an ant and is very strong and is very smart. I mean, why are you not going to fear that? So I just see why the fear was very developed in the books. And that's the one that they, that Ender committed, like pretty much killed them all. Genocide. So they are very fascinating. The piggies that are the other ones, such as they come in the second book. They sound really cute, but they're very strange. They're so small, and I guess they look like pigs in a way, but they don't show emotion. Not really. They show it in different ways, like I guess through gestures and things like that. And, do it through like face. Like, I can talk to people because I like talking to people in person because I could play off their reactions. It's a lot easier. So that's what I do, but you can't do that with the piggies, which is so interesting. And they have their, each alien species has their own um, 
culture and how they live and how they survive. The buggers, like each one is connected to the queen, kind of like um, these, I believe it is. Or like, or ants, ants. Um, the piggies, they literally had to, because they're born, they're born on a tree and they literally had to eat through their mother to come out and then when they come out, um, that they call it the first and second and third life. They come out and then they actually become the piggies that we learn from their life we used to do more often. And then if you're a boy or a guy, if you're a girl, you either are take care of children or I'm sorry, you bear children so you don't even but you don't even have like life anyway. They just like eat through you. That was awful. And then or if you're sterile then you become pretty much like the ones in charge of the tribe and if you're male you help them and then when you do something noble or amazing they plant you they literally got the, it's so it could be very grotesque if they put this in a movie i could see why they didn't make the second one because wow that wow like they cut them from each other up and they have to put the organs in certain places for the tree to grow and they become in and they become the tree, pretty much. So... Wow, like, wow. So I love that. I thought it was interesting. Then Jane, who was amazing. And I loved her origin. It's like, you don't really find out how she comes around until... Um, they see how the buggers tried to connect to Ender, tried to communicate with him even though he couldn't. But they made the bridge, and that bridge was Jane. And she's connected to all of the computers, and she's... You know, just... They, I can see why they call her, they could possibly call her a god because she knows so much. She is so powerful. It's just insane. So, all of the um, alien species are amazing. I think they're awesome. My fourth thing that I love are the cultures that they bring in. It's not just American, like, which is really cool. I mean, I love the Americans, I love it. But they also bring in Japanese cultures. They bring in the Ch Chinese culture, which that one's insane. That one's really prominent. And I think the third one, I believe it's this one. Yeah, and then you meet this girl named Queen Zhao, who is the daughter of. It's just such a sad story. But you see their culture, how they, how they follow the gods, and they have to do rituals, and it's insane and sad. And some of it could be beautiful, but wow. So I love the culture that they go in. Because yeah, it's like, you would think, okay, me being an ignorant American, um, see the, think Chinese and Japanese, they're like, oh, they're pretty much the same, right? Oh, no, they are not. And this book teaches you that. So it's insane. Um, the fifth thing that I liked about this book, these books, are the sad endings. I mean, I don't love when a book ends sadly, but it makes it more, it makes it re a bit more real, and you understand certain things, how things come out of that. Like the one that I was talking about, the girl Queen Zhao, she completely believes that the way that the, the gods talk to her, and it ends up turning out that it's not gods, she just has OCD. The reason she has to do the certain things she does is because she has OCD and she has to clean. She has to feel clean. But when that is finally taken away, she still believes it, and she's like, "Oh no, the gods left me." So she's still trying to do her rituals over and over again until the gods talk to her again. And it doesn't happen until she dies, and she ends up dying, and it's just. It's sad to think of it that way. I know it could be. That's a very interesting topic to talk about. I mean, what if? But if it is real, you never know. I mean, that it's just fascinating. And then, spoiler: obviously, Ender dies at the end. I mean, he's so old. He's about three thousand years old. I think it was time for him to die. But I got, I, I got so attached to him. I'm like, no, I love this. Oh, he's so amazing. And like, I do not want him to die, but eventually he needs to die for Jane to live and 
before he could live, like his soul could live in Peter, the the I guess the creature, not the creature, but like the his son. Pretty much, it's like a son. So that his whole soul could go into Peter and live another life that wasn't completely broken and like he was when he was six year old, six years old. How they broke him down to become Ender the genocide. So, I mean, very sad that one. Also, what else? Um, all the killings. I mean, when you first think the piggies, they plant people. They plant, they plant themselves, right? And they think it's an amazing, beautiful thing. But when it comes to humans, they didn't realize that, you know, they were killing the human. They were putting him into the third life. So that's just sad in itself. So, you know, it's just... It, I cried in a lot of parts, I must admit, I cried. I think obviously when Ender died, I cried when... I didn't cry with Queen Jia, I just felt very bad for her, like, sympathized, I guess. Um, oh, and all the brutal truths, wow. Okay, he's the speaker of the dead, Ender is the speaker of the dead, for the dead. And he talks, he, I guess, he talks the death of Novita's um, late husband, the one who died. And I mean, she just lived a screwed up life. Wow, it was awful. But she, but Ender spoke, speaks some, um, how can I say? Oh, Ender speaks pretty much what happened in their life and why they did things and how it all, all was, right? So, with, the, with that husband, like, you just, the kids learn that one, that that wasn't their dad, that two, they understand why he was so awful to them, and then they also learn that apparently they have four other sisters, and one of the sons was in love with one of the sisters, so, you know, he ends up not being able to be with her because it's his sister, and she definitely doesn't want to be with him because, oh, we're brothers now, we can't be together, oh, it's awful. So those are just some pretty sad things that happen. I love characters, so my set, the sixth one, is realistic characters. I mean, my favorite character overall is probably the girl called, um, oh, I can never say her name. I'm saying these awfully, I know the middle for it. It's me. Sing Wang Mu. Sing Wang Mu. Sing I mean, she's Chinese. But she's just such a beautiful character, so flawed, and she will, like, her whole life she was a servant, but then she believes She's very smart, and she was pretty much like Queen Qin Zhao, except without that disorder of having like the OCD thing. So they didn't think this god spoke to her, but she actually was very, very smart. So she ends up going with Peter. She's such like a brilliant, um, confident girl, but then she ends up falling for Peter, the um, you know, with Ender's creation. So. It's pretty insane. I love her for that, and she's obviously flawed. She, um, she sometimes like she doesn't believe that she's worthy, or she doesn't believe that she can do certain things, or that. Um, I mean, one of the things. Now I think of it a lot more. Like maybe she didn't have that many flaws. That's about it, I could think. But she's amazing, obviously. Ender has so many flaws, but they balance it out with the good characteristics of them. So, Ender's a genius. He's smart. He's powerful, literally. But he also believes that he that he is needed. That he sticks around for everything that's needed. He doesn't really. I mean, he falls in love with his wife, but he still wants to go. He doesn't stay with her, he still wants to do other things. Like, I don't know. And then he definitely failed when he pretty much gave himself to Jane instead of his wife. And there's so many things with him. He's such an amazing character. Same with Valentine, his actual sister. But anyway, they had their flaws. And I love in the book that all of the choices they make drive the plot. Because there's some books that things just happen to them, and you're just like, um, okay, if you literally take them out of the story and put someone else, 
nothing would change. So, with these characters, each one, they make their decisions, and that decision builds a plot and eventually goes to the ending, right? But it's pretty amazing how he did this, how he wrote this book. And the book, wow, it's just so long. Wow, I'm talking a lot. When you get me talking about books, I could talk to you all day. I don't know what was my point. But anyway, they have great characteristics and they're amazing. I love the flaws of the characters and how they drive the plot. So realistic characters and just amazing. Okay, now, <laughs> the person I hated in this book. I hated them so much. Well, okay, it's mostly in this last one. Because in, in the third book, she's a little girl, so she can't, she's not that important, right? But, okay, no. No, you meet her in Speaker for the Dead as a little girl, but then she comes around in these two books and, oh gosh, she's a smart person, very smart, but just an awful, awful human being. Honestly, I just hate the woman. It's like, her name's Flora, I think that's how you say her name, Flora, Q-U-A-R-A. Oh my gosh, I just hated that girl. <laughs> just an awful human being. So self-centered, so annoying, just trying to be... <sighs> wow, I just did not like her. If you liked her, good for you. But I did not, so, you know, that's that. Okay, thank you for watching. I know this video was really long, and all I did was talk about books. I talked about these girls and these characters, but I mean... <sighs> Honestly, I wish it was just like another person so we could like back and forth and talk about it. But it's okay. But this is the best that I can do. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and 